Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the On Time, On Target a morning, a brief. We've got a great show for you today. You know that the stimulus checks are coming now, so not to be tone deaf to the folks that need to use it, you know, what it's intended for, which is, you know, paying bills, paying off debt. But you're in a, if you are in a position to put this money to work towards your future, I'm going to give you six stocks today that you can put. Basically, they all add up to $600 that, you you know, if you're just getting started, these are good six stocks to put in your portfolio. Long-term quality buy and hold type names. And I'll give you the reason why here in a few minutes. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's go ahead and get started. back everyone and make sure you have your chat window set up and your QA window set up as depicted at the top of our morning briefing overview here. Also standard disclaimer applies. This is a financial education presentation. So you have to do your own due diligence for acting upon anything you hear this morning. Full disclosures or information and full disclaimers information, excuse me, is available at ototnow.com. All right, welcome to today, Tuesday, December 29th, closing in on in in the excuse me, the end of the year, and the market futures are up again. Are we on a stimulus high? I think so. Uh, not a whole lot of negative news. There is the Cash Act that's being pushed uh, today. Uh, there will be a vote on that one way or the other today on that $2,000. We're going to assume that's not going to happen. We will, we will readdress if that is. Uh, but that's actually 2000 per person and dependent. So, I mean, family of four under 150,000 a year, that's $8,000 in your pocket within the next week or so. Um, we'll, we'll see. I don't, I don't think it will happen actually, but then again, it could. We're at the end of the year. Um, you know, politicians uh, like to pander to their crowd. So maybe sending out some free money is the way to do it. Uh, so we shall see. <clears throat> okay. For tactical objectives today, we're going to talk about uh, a discipline long term uh, investor topic is going to be stocks to buy with your $600. So, if you know, I, I got it, and not, you know, like I said in the open, not to be tone deaf, you're supposed to pay your bills with this, uh, pay off your debt with this. But if you are in a position, uh, like many of us that tune into the show are, uh, then yeah, you can put this to work towards your future. So, if you had $600 to buy a couple stocks, what would you do? Uh, well, I'm going to give you some names to buy. Uh, I hold all of these personally, they're all long term holds. I don't care if they drop 10% tomorrow or go up. 10 percent tomorrow that's not the point i'm not selling them uh we're gonna hold we're gonna hold them so we're gonna go through that and talk about that a little bit about his philosophy as well as what are some quality names out there uh, the other question today is what is the proper level of diversification well <coughs> Obviously, if you're just getting started, uh, getting started is far more important than what is the proper level of diversification. You got to start. Uh, you can just buy an index fund and you, know, you buy the SPY, you get 500 stocks. So uh, you can start with diversification, but I will talk about that. And again, if you're trying to seek alpha, i.e. you're a professional investor, i.e. me, um, you know, diversification is actually kind of the, the enemy. Um, you know, if I, if I buy everything, I might as well just buy an index fund and go back to bed, right? So uh, when you're in the market doing this professionally, there are certain pockets of uh, outperformance that you want to target <clears throat> to be able to uh, outperform the market. Okay, and we'll talk about that later. Our flow is going to be long, short, open, short, long. We're going around the market review that you know the futures are up and it's pretty much green around the world. Um, we will get into our headline review of the day, which is a lot of the CARES Act and, of course, the vaccines. Uh, AstraZeneca is supposed to get approval today, I believe, in the UK for those, <coughs> for their, excuse me, 
Uh, Long-term investments, there's the six names we're gonna talk about. So it's a little spoiler. Those are out of the bag and I'll have those pulled up on the screen for you. We will get into our short-term execution where we're gonna day trade. Over in the chat window, I have four long names and one short. I'm not excited about the short, so think about longs. Uh, NNDM and DPW both have pretty good news. Uh, things that will take it higher. And again, that's assuming that the market continues higher as well, since that's the momentum we have going in. <clears throat> we'll execute that, then we'll get to the question of the day. And please, if you have any questions, put them in the Q&A session in the Q&A window, and I will get to those for you. All right, contingencies, if you have any tech issues, reach out to me at steve at ototnow.com. We'll get this solved for you. And if you want to learn more, if you get to the uh, day trading part, and you don't understand what I'm talking about as far as our unit, I have plenty of Inf uh, academic information available on the OTOT Now website. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at <clears throat> TD Ameritrade Think Pipes, and we'll show you what, get to the right screen here, there we go, and sharing that out. I'm gonna double check that share, that didn't look right. Okay, there we go, shared it, yes, it is correct. We're looking at the S&P 500, so where are we? Okay, well, we're, if you really look at across, we're well above the new highs, uh, that we had back in, <clears throat> what is that, end of August, early September, going through the election, and now we're bouncing up to the top. Uh, you know, are we at exact new highs? No, but we're with, certainly within reach of one good day or two, and we could be there. Do I think that's not going to, do I think it's going to happen? I don't know. There's a lot of optimism in the air. A lot of people are looking forward to 2021. Uh, I get that. Uh, and it's a little bit lower volume. Again, the true professionals, I always say that, you know, the, the heavy hitters is what I should say. Uh, the folks that don't need to work every day, like like many of us, uh, are not even paying attention to the market right now. They've already done their stuff and they're on vacation. <clears throat> so we shall see. Could go either way going into the year. I don't think it'll be a significant move one way or the other. When you focus in on where are we over the short term, again, this is the last five trading days. The dark blue <clears throat> are the market open hours. And you can see we basically have a steady trend higher. Okay, for our day trading screens, I was able to fix my tech issue from yesterday. So setting those up uh, real quick, we're gonna have NNDM long and then DPW uh, long. You see these are not as heavily traded as some others out there. And then CVAC is our short. So that's how you can set up your screens. Okay, let's go ahead and go over to cnbc.com. We'll take a look at where we are with the futures. And as I said, <clears throat> excuse me, as I said earlier, we are in the green here. So let's get to refreshing those and we'll go around the world real quick. <clears throat> okay, so there's where we are, half a point in the green basically across the board. And let's check Europe, green across the board basically. Uh, Shanghai, China's down a little bit, but everything else is green. Here's our numbers from yesterday. Pretty good move up and pretty steady uh, across the board <clears throat> as well. Uh, 10 year 0.95. There's talk about some artificial increases to intentionally move it above one. Uh, I don't think that is going to happen. And I, I think it's a little bit dangerous to manipulate it like that. So hopefully that is just talk. <clears throat> okay. Oil holding steady in the 40 to 60 zone. Uh, gold and silver pretty much unmoved. And then Bitcoin did sell off a little bit after its recent push up to 28,000. All right, let's go on back to the headlines. Okay, the Cash Act, I can't believe that hasn't been taken already, but anyhow, that's the $2,000 stimulus check. So again, instead of 600 a person, including your dependents uh, below age 17, it is now 2,000 a person. Uh, including your dependents. So family four would be 8,000. It also includes the elderly dependents. And it also goes back and amends the CARES Act, which was the first stimulus uh, relief to include older dependents. So I, let's say you have a mother-in-law that is uh, back in the house. Uh, before you couldn't get your extra $500 back then uh, for that dependent. In this case, you, that would be amended. And I don't know, <clears throat> like I said, I don't think it'll pass. Uh, I think the uh, Senate will hold it up, but we'll see. All right, a lot of talk about the Boeing 737 MAX. I'm a pilot, do not worry about this airplane. Yes, there were issues. Yes, they've been fixed. Go about your business. I think that is uh, not an issue at all, to be honest. <clears throat> yep, veto, uh, or you know about Trump's veto of the defense bill, that's gonna get overridden. And we'll move forward. 
All right. Don't see anything else that is, you know, there's a Alibaba bounce yesterday. It's been selling off hard. You know, I like that name. Uh, the Ant Financial thing is either going to be an IPO like it planned or uh, Jack Ma is talking about taking over to a holding firm. <clears throat> if that happens, that's going to mute some of the uh, money that was going to be made. But still, Baba is a long term buy in my opinion. OK, let's go to uh, the six stocks that you should consider uh, if you want to. Put your $600 to work towards a portfolio. These add up to almost 600. So, uh, so that was by design. So literally this is more targeted at a, maybe a younger person with the $600 or something, not necessarily young, somebody just getting started and they want to do individual stocks, which is not for everybody, but consider. Um, these are companies you buy and hold. You don't trade in and out of it. You don't get fancy, uh, but you can certainly log into Robin, Robinhood and buy these all for 600 bucks. The first of which is Apple. It's the only one I'm going to bring up a detailed chart on. Apple is bouncing off its highs. And people are like, why would I want to buy Apple uh, if it's bouncing off its highs? Well, if you don't buy it here, guess what? Are you going to buy it at 200, at 300? I mean, they're going places. You know that. I, I think it's the best stock out there. It's my largest personal holding, largest holding across the book, and it's bouncing off a new highs. So, so you know, the big red I believe button, boom. Uh, fantastic leader in Tim Cook. Uh, not the visionary that Steve Jobs was, but he's an efficiency machine. Okay, the guy knows how to make money and he's going to be in that chair a long time, I hope. <clears throat> so Apple's going higher in my opinion, maybe not tomorrow, but you know, six months, 12 months out, it is a place to have your money to uh, for a long-term increase in the value. Okay, let's switch over to Schwab real quick and I'll show you the other... Uh, the other names that are up there. So here's in the upper left, we have Apple. We already talked about that. <clears throat> Disney. Uh, you own a lot of things with Disney. You own movie theaters. And you're like, oh, those are out of vogue. Well, yeah, but they're, they'll come back eventually. Uh, I saw a headline this morning that hopefully the worst will be over and we'll be on a road to recovery by Valentine's Day. That, uh, you know, that's a fun headline. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it'll all be better by the time, uh, you know, we celebrate our our uh, relationships, Dick. Okay, maybe uh, we'll see. <clears throat> but you know, if, if you have theme parks, you have ESPN that's um, you know kind of holding the Disney stock back. You have the retail side of it, uh, selling dolls and toys and things. So a lot of ways to win with Disney. It's obviously an iconic uh, brand and not going anywhere. Uh, MDT is Medtronic. If you want to own some own something in the medical space, again, insurance kind of holds down the margins sometimes with the big drug makers. So that's why I don't like them as much as I do the equipment maker, right? The equipment maker, everybody needs to field new equipment for their hospitals and everything else that's out there. So Medtronic's a way to put money behind that. It's, a, it's boring. Oh my gosh, boring. Just, but who cares, right? Boring makes money. Uh, so put some money into Medtronic. Uh, Blackstone BX is the number one, is the largest private equity firm in the world. Uh, these people operate kind of in a black box. So you don't get to really know what they're doing at all times. But like currently they own the Bellagio, they, you know, they took Hilton Hotels, uh, flipped it, IPO'd it back out. They did the same with SeaWorld. So uh, pretty smart people financially. You just have to kind of hit, I believe, because you don't really get to know exactly what they're doing. <clears throat> uh, Palantir is, again, uh, they just had their uh, direct listing not too long ago. The stock's done very well, up 150% from that time. Uh, however, they're you know long-term data manipulation. So if you do if you believe data is the new oil, which is what I believe, then Palantir is a good place to store a couple of your dollars and watch them grow. Last one, laser. This is uh, Lumentum. Um, the this is the light detection and ranging technology that is you know a in your iphone 12 if you have one shout out um if you don't if it's it's the light detection arranging it's going into self-driving cars to help them stay deconflicted so again long-term theme do i think autonomous cars are coming i do i think the idea of a personal car ownership is probably out of here in 10 years we'll see and i love cars you know i'm a car guy i have a too many um but the uh, <laughs> But yeah, I do, I do think that that is going to change uh, significantly over time. Okay, a couple names to take a look at. Let's look at our longs first is uh, NNDM. <clears throat> this is uh, Nano Dimension. Uh, they sold a piece of their technology and you can see the stocks going higher there around that uh, 8% or so for their, excuse me, 5% up. So I like the way it's positioned. Nice 10 cent stop on NNDM. We'll get you done here. So we'll track that first. Next one is DPW. Pop up here, D, no, it's not D, DPW. <clears throat> and Peter Thiel, nope, 
what's the, uh, I didn't write down the headline, what is it? Uh, big military contracts are coming in again, $5 moving up to 540, that's what, 8% or so um, when you do the math. So uh, it positioned to go higher and it's right around that five, $5 bubble. So that's where we're gonna be taking a look higher. You can also look at ABCL, which I believe is lower volume. Uh, Peter Thiel announced that, yeah, 6,000, so not much here, but Peter Thiel got involved and that is going to bring money in the door. And then the last one, there's emergency approval in, in QTRX. Again, too low of a volume to really trade, but something to consider. And our, to the downside, I don't really like this short, so I don't plan on taking it. But if you are a, you know, you know that shorts work much better than longs. If you're looking to go short, CVAC has been in a, CureVac has been a continuous sell-off. It's down towards 81. So, I mean, that's like another 8% off this morning. <clears throat> so people are fire sailing this thing from 150 all the way down into the 80s. So something to consider if you want to go short, I'll have it pulled up, but I don't plan on taking it. All right. Let's get over to our TD Ameritrade screens and give me a second to get my stuff set up. <clears throat> Welcome everyone to the on time on target play of the day you have four screens in front of you and we have 20 seconds to the open. Uh, you have a spy on the left that's the one minute chart the futures are in the green and we have momentum to the upside on uh, we have two longs here NNDM is the first long you'll see that pop up here in a second, and then DPW is another long that we have going forward again about a on DPW. Our short of the day is a continuation, which is CVAC. I don't really plan on taking it unless it just sets up uh, epically, but <clears throat> um, we'll, uh, we'll monitor that for short. All right, nothing going. Let me see if I can wake up in and DM here. Otherwise, we are going to switch to ABCL. Don't take ACBL right now. Let some, let some more uh, volume come into it. So we're really going to focus on DPW as far as our uh, <clears throat> morning trade. So I'm gonna get the arrow in here so you know which way. Had arrow trouble yesterday and it appears to be fixed, which I like. Stock's not moving a whole lot in that first minute. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, just uh, kind of want to be patient on it. Low of the day is 524. So if we can get it into 4534 here, that gives us plenty of room and an exit point of 564. So just kind of want to let it do it, let it do its thing. Got 300 shares of volume. Um, <clears throat> If it comes down here to 515 or so, I would like that even better before it snaps and turns long. So, uh, so we'll just be patient uh, with DPW. Uh, let's see, ABCL selling off a little bit. Let's switch over to our other one, QTRX. Again, not a whole lot going on there long as well. Okay, let's look at, uh, we have low of the day at 521. So let's get into 530 long. Again, you're not in it now. You're going to be patient. You're going to wait for it to come back up. If it continues to sell off down here, then we'll get a better entry. So that's why you don't just stab in here and take it early. Hey, look, it just happened. All right, so low of the day is now 512. We're looking at getting in at about 520 with a 510 stop uh, to the downside. So again, that's where we are. We're looking at 520. Get ready to hop in. Remember, a uh, nice 10 cent stop. There it is, 521 was the actual number for hopping in there. Uh, so we're in the trade long. We got our 510 stop. That's the most important thing to get in there as well in case this thing goes against us. And here's our big arrow for making sure you know there's two arrows on there now so you know exactly where we're taking this trade. So you can still take it here. Uh, 518 is a great entry point. We have our exit points. Uh, we have our first R point would be 530. So get that drawn in for you. 540 is the next exit point. And then 550 is, excuse me, I said eight exit point. These are our points. Uh, you'd be out of the trade at 550. So it is it keeps coming down here, getting close. So you have to uh, just keep an eye on it and have your stop in. If it goes below 510, you have to be out. We're, two, we're three minutes into the day. So that bottom should be in if this long is going to work. If it fails out, you're down one R. And then we come back tomorrow to... Uh, to execute our strategy. Again, we risk one R every day to make, to make three. So if that's say, you can do this with paper money or uh, real money, um, or you can just follow along. But if you are, if your R unit's hundred dollars, you're basically risking hundred to make 300 on a daily basis. If you use 350, then that's a, you're risking 350 to make a thousand uh, every day. So again, with our strategy, you lose one R, 
and you make three, and if you hold to those stops and then make the math work for you, you own, you know, if you're right half the time, you're making a ton of money. So they don't always work, but we're trades finally in the green here, so we can stop staring at it while I'm talking. Okay, I'm gonna look at some other names that have been in play real quick to see what's going on. Luck and Coffee has been selling off, so let's hopefully it's in the green a little bit. It is, you know, percent up, that'd be nice. Uh, let's see, DraftKings sold off hard yesterday. <clears throat> Figured that would bounce. Eh, it's up a percent or half a percent. Not a whole lot going on there. Palantir is another name that I, excuse me, mentioned this morning as far as our six stocks. It's up a couple percent. That's looking good. Let's check Apple. Up at 1%, I think 138.41 is uh, the all-time high. You can see, obviously, when you get something with a lot of volume in it, these are millions. So when you look over here, these are hundreds of thousands. These are millions of shares that are moving, and that's why you see it, uh, you know, be bopping around a lot faster. That's not a technical term. Uh, but, you know, you see a lot of motion there. It's, it's kind of crazy. So, um <clears throat> like where that's going you know amazon was up four percent yesterday i didn't bring up amazon this morning because of this this issue right here it's at three thousand dollars so yes you can get fractional shares but do you you know a lot of that doesn't appeal to a lot of people to hold a fractional share so that's why i didn't even mention it um maybe uh i'm too old for fractional shares you know or have uh, i don't need to play the fractional share games that's why i don't like it um certainly if you want to participate in one of the best companies in the world uh, again, Amazon is a good place to have your money. All right, let's see. Medtronic is another name I threw out this morning. It's up 0.65%, uh, so about with the market. Uh, nothing special there. And let's see what other names haven't I talked about. Uh, Disney, let's check out where Disney is. Disney's been on quite the uh, move up lately. <clears throat> So again, it's part of the uh, relief stocks, if you will. It's in the green, even though it's uh, down almost a, you know, a little, almost a buck from where it was uh, pre-market. But anyhow, good long-term name. You really uh, you just have to hold it though. Don't don't trade in and out of it. Just hold it. Good one to buy for kids too, because they can. Uh, it resonates with them. Uh, Blackstone's been hovering around 65. Again, it was below 50 for a long time. Uh, so now up at uh, 65. Uh, I like it here and I think it's going higher. Another stock that I would have thrown in there, except for it's above 600 a share, is BlackRock, um, you know, 715 a share. So obviously that doesn't work. Okay, uh, let's see what else. Laser. <coughs> we haven't looked at up at, uh, it's down a little bit on the day. Okay, kill your trade. We are out of the trade to the bottom side. So once thing exhausts the bottom, you have to be out because there's no, uh, no uh, reason for this to bounce right here. It just got into uncharted territory on the day. So anyhow, even though our trade doesn't work, that's almost a perfect example of how you enter and exit a trade. Even though we're, uh, we're down an R, we will come back tomorrow and uh, put a three R trade on and get that money back and make some more. All right, CVAC never did really work. It didn't have that headline to go to the downside. So that's why even though it's gapping, did gap down, you're not seeing a, a big move. Uh, further down from there, like a negative headline. You know, the ones we like are legal issues, CEO quits, um, SEC investigations, all of those things are preferred. Okay, we'll leave this screen and go back to here and see what's going on in the market. <clears throat> Alibaba up three and a half percent. It was up four percent yesterday. Again, uh, the, you would have thought over the weekend that the world was ending because the Chinese government was looking into uh, Alibaba and their practices. And guess what? It did not end. It's still the Amazon of China uh, with a huge middle class. It's their golden goose. Why would they shoot it? You know, you heard me say that yesterday. Uh, Shopify again on fire. That boy, that stock has run up. Nice bounce in KWeb. It was down yesterday. Again, KWeb is Chinese technology. So Tencent Holdings, also Chinese tech. Sony, got your hands on a PlayStation 5 yet? I haven't. Um, I don't know if they're in stores yet. I need to kind of wrap back around and take a look. Um, Luck and Coffee up a percent. That's nice. Boeing, we talked about the 737 max. Uh, Boeing's up, you know, over 100 percent from when it, it got down below $100 a share. And uh, I was buying it. And yeah, nice, nice 100 percent move in the past nine months. Because uh, evidently people thought we weren't going to fly anymore. Yes, we are. And of course, Boeing is the best exposure of the having defense industry and the airline industry. 
Uh, GoDaddy kind of been on fire lately as well. Zoom up, MongoDB is another software name that is seemingly always up. Let's take a look to the downside. Northwest Bio selling off a little bit. That's not a big deal. It's up huge on the year. ARKG, these are some index funds, the ARK series. Uh, they're very aggressive and they are very focused. So they move like individual stocks. Uh, but I've been pretty, pretty impressed with these folks. So I have a little bit in the uh, book. Uh, LCA selling off a little bit. It's supposed to go to Golden Nugget Online Gaming by Thursday to try to get that done this year. That's been in a long-term delay. So if that doesn't happen, I, I could see this thing selling off 10, 15% this week. Uh, it's still a hold through the, uh, through the direct listing, but uh, I could certainly see it going, moving to the downside before it moves up. All right, saw laser in here. I saw Palantir bouncing around minus three and a half percent. So some of the tech names selling off. All right, let's go back long here and then go to our question of the day. All right, you guys are awfully quiet this morning, so no questions in there, nothing in the chat. <clears throat> okay, let's take a look at diversification. We're going to come back uh, over to Google Chrome, come pop back up on camera and talk about diversification. Okay, so there, there's some philosophies out there, right? you know, and I'm a child of the 80s, which, be, which was the big mutual fund push, right? So when you think grandma and grandpa, how did they invest? And I'm talking my grandma and grandpa, it was individual stocks generally of the companies they worked for. That's kind of how you did it. Maybe you owned stock outside that, maybe you didn't. Um, when you talk about lack of diversification, uh, if you worked for say a company like AT&T and you got AT&T stock, well, that's the opposite of diversification <laughs> because your, your income is coming from a source and your investing is coming from that same source. So generally that's a don't do that. Uh, well, um, uh, Buffett says, you know, diversification, he calls it diversification, right? You're going to mute your returns. <clears throat> if you know Apple's the best stock in the world, then just put all your money into Apple. Well, um, yeah, anything else you buy would not be the best company in the world, so it would affect your overall return. Uh, well, there's a danger to that is what if you're wrong? So you don't want to go into the investing business with an ego at all. You don't want to fall in love with stocks. You don't want to think you're invincible. You do not want to think you're always right. You're always assessing, why do I own this? And what's my plan for it? And has the thesis of the investment thesis changed? Okay, I don't, Apple, you know, it's the greatest tech company in the world. It's also a luxury company. It's huge, high margins, and the stuff just works. You're not going to move me off that thesis. Even if the iPhone 13 flops next year, you're not going to see me bail on Apple. I would bail on Apple if they were investigated for like accounting fraud. Uh, yes, or Tim Cook goes to jail because he's doing Ponzi schemes on the side. Yeah, those are big deals, right? But as long as the company's truck along doing what it's doing, even if they have a product that misses, who cares, right? Uh, you, fantasy football, you don't dump your star running back because they have a bad week, right? Literally, you go, oh, crap, wish that didn't happen. But same thing, stock gets hit, doesn't matter. Look at Apple this year, look at the ride. People will tell you all day long that it's overvalued. Well, people have been saying that since it was $50 a share. And those people will say it <clears throat> instead of owning it and going off, you know, living their life, they will sit around and not own it and write articles hating on it, uh, largely because they they're pissed they missed out on it and they still want to, they're craving to be right. They have ego problems. So don't have ego problems. Um, so back to diversification. Again, uh, it's been proven through PhD level studies multiple times that 16 is about the number where you get to the same, if you own 16 individual stocks, that's the same level statistically as owning 500, 5,000. Uh, you'd be, you know, you get into confidence intervals and all that stat stuff that uh, is boring for most people, but it's about the same. So if, when you're looking to diversify, <clears throat> yeah, if you focus to five to eight stocks, that's pretty focused. So you have to be prepared to underperform if you're wrong. If you get out to 16 stocks, well, now you have a lot more. You're about on market average. And if you get past 16, then you're just owning it because you want to own it. A lot of people will just buy a whole bunch of stocks and hopes for the best. That's not a fantastic strategy right? Uh, you might as well go into an index fund if you're just going to start buying stuff and hope for the best. Uh, but if you are paying attention and you are focusing your investment efforts and you have a specific reason why you want to invest in a company, again, you can hold 16 stocks or even less. Uh, since I've been in business, I personally have been down to three. I would never do that for a client um, because I can't. I can't explain that to a regulator. But uh, for me personally, there's times where I, I've moved down to three stocks. So 
was Amazon, Apple, and Blackstone. So, you know, just those are the core. And then when they, you know, things change and you pick back up, then you, you build out your portfolio. Um, so anyhow, why do you diversify? Again, it's basics of risk management. Uh, if you're with me, I have a statistics program that I can actually show you what, how you're reducing your risk through diversification that would put most people to sleep. But it's something that I look at to make sure you're properly diversified out there. Um, you can diversify by asset class. Gold and silver have kind of been on fire and I throw Bitcoin in there as well. If you're going to diversify as an inflation hedge, then yes, if you are convinced and your thesis is inflation is going to go up, and I would say it's, of course it's going up, it should average 2% a year, that's healthy. So if you think it's going to go well past that or into a hyperinflation phase, then yeah, up to 10% of your portfolio in gold, silver, or Bitcoin, all that is fine. Again, just realize that most of the time you're going to be wrong on that stuff, right? And the market's going to far outpace things that store value. But if you're right in the short term, you know, move on in and you have that as a hedge against the uh, uh, portfolio. I don't really deal in commodities outside of just the gold, silver, and I don't have personally any money in Bitcoin, but I do look at it every day. So we shall see. Uh, real estate's another way to, again, uh, build out that portfolio. So that's your built-in diversification. The last thing I'll talk about is if you do happen to have a pension, because there's a few of us in here that are military retirees that have pensions, that acts as a bond fund. So since you have that bond fund, you trad traditionally can be more aggressive in your investing because you have something that pays you a fixed amount over time. So it's like, you know, if you have something that pays you 50,000 a year, that's like having a million dollar bond fund sitting on the side, paying out 5%. So just realize that allows you to get riskier with the other assets. So, all right, that's enough on uh, diversification for today. Again, thanks for uh, joining me this morning and we'll uh, see how the Cash Act uh, goes today and see if they pass that or, that or not. And if they do, again, we'll peel that back tomorrow. So with that, I'm gonna let you go. You guys have a good one and we'll talk to you soon.